Welcome to Transcriptomics 2. This course builds upon Transcriptomics 1, where we learned about the processing of high-throughput sequencing data. You can find all of our Transcriptomics courses in the RNA-Seq collection on the edu.tbio.info site. Transcriptomics 2 is the second course in the introductory series. Here, we will focus on finding significant differences in gene expression patterns. We will start with differential gene expression and continue to look at typical challenges that can be resolved using statistical methods. We will look at hypothesis testing, p-values, false discovery rate, and then use DSEC2 and EDGE-R methods for differential gene expression analysis. Next, we will explore more complex variation in the gene expression by using factor regression models. As a result, you will learn how to detect obvious differences between preset groups of samples as well as use regression to identify the expression level variation associated with experimental design factors. In the first transcriptomics course, we learned about processing short reads and converting them into a table of expression. The table has genes for rows and samples for columns. In each cell, there is a number corresponding to the level of expression for this gene in a given sample. In the gene expression table, we can find genes that are expressed at different levels in samples. In order to study a condition such as breast cancer type, we need to see how the gene expression data can explain these conditions. Differentially expressed genes are the ones we can identify to have a clear difference in expression levels between the two groups. Here you can see that the ENSG gene listed at the top of the graphic has a higher expression level in the triple negative group compared to the ER positive group. There are several factors that make it difficult to identify differentially expressed genes. First, there are thousands of genes in each sample. Samples in each group can have significant variation in expression levels. And even when there is a difference that we've observed, it's hard to know what will be significant enough to say that these are truly differentially expressed genes. To overcome these challenges, we have to turn to statistical analysis. William Gossett was a statistician who worked for the Guinness Beer Brewing Company. He earned a degree in chemistry at Oxford and joined the brewing firm in 1899. His work for Guinness led him to investigate the validity of results obtained from small samples. Previous theory had concentrated instead on large samples. Gossett's most important result was known as the student's t-test of distribution, published in 1908. A t-test is a type of inferential statistic used to determine if there is a significant difference between the means of two groups. A t-test is used as a hypothesis testing tool which allows testing of an assumption applicable to a population. The p-value is often used in statistics and represents an unlikely observation to happen by chance. A significant t-test result is one in which the difference between groups is unlikely to have occurred because the sample happened to be atypical. Statistical significance suggests that the two larger populations from which we sample are quote unquote actually different. Another point we have to consider in our example is the number of genes in each sample. This issue is called family-wise error rate. There are a number of approaches to address the unreliable nature of p-values in cases with a large number of observations when multiple testing happens. Most of the approaches attempt to assign the adjusted p-value to each test to reduce the p-value threshold from 5% to a more reasonable value. The false discovery rate approach is a more recent development. This approach also determines adjusted p-values for each test. However, it controls the number of false discoveries in those tests that result in a discovery, such as a significant result. Because of this, it is less conservative than the Bonferroni approach and has great ability to find truly significant results. These methods can also be used manually, but many are included in the standard output of differential expression analysis packages. One way to use differential expression analysis is to add it to the end of a full RNA-seq processing pipeline. Another way is to use the gene expression table to directly run DSeq2 or EDGE-R packages independently. In the course, you will have a chance to practice this pipeline as well as see the analysis results. The results will include the original and adjusted p-values for each gene. In the course, we will also talk about factor regression analysis that uses regression to study a number of factors influencing the expression levels of each gene. We will talk about regression, correlation, and how to understand this powerful approach to study gene expression data. 
In our example, we will have two factors, cancer type and mouse type. We will also learn how to set up a pipeline using these factors and levels to conduct factor regression analysis. As a result, we can turn to biological interpretation of found genes and learn about gene function in the context of differential gene expression, or the factors we found to be associated with a certain expression pattern. Transcriptomics 2 is a course that will help you identify the links between gene expression and phenotypes. Let's start learning.